Now let's see how we can actually address these problems. So uh, right now we know that we I know that we don't have any problems with the random vibe or mechanical shot, but if we did have problems with this, we actually you know what? Let's go ahead and change our mechanical shock to something. I want to just modify this that gives us gives us a problem. Let's just change this peak load from 32 G's to 100 G. And apply. There you go. It is there. Save. Let me rerun mechanical shock here. Edit properties. Save and run. Just give it a few seconds to run. While we're waiting for that, let's look at uh, solar fatigue. So we know our, we do have a problem here. Our solar fatigue is failing at a little less than two years and our plated true hole fatigue is failing at a little over two years. Solar fatigue and plated true hole fatigue is due to CTE mismatch between the board and the component for the uh, solder fatigue and between uh, the board and the through hole for the uh, plated through hole. So the smaller the gap is between the CTE between these two, the better results we get. Now for our mechanical shock that is done, we can see now we do have failures. Some components are failing almost right away. How do we address these problems? So if I go to my natural frequency, right click, and go to view 3D results. The 3D result window is gonna open up. And let's just wait for it to run. There you go, it's here. You can see that our natural frequencies are listed. So if I click on the first mode and refresh, you can see how the board works, right? So if I minimize the warping, it's too exaggerated here. There you go. So you can see how the board works, right? In the, in the first mode. So you have the max displacement right in the middle. Let's look at displacement in the second mode. There you go. You can see the max displacement is right in these two areas. How do we address this? So of course, if I add a uh, mount point in the center and two mount points in, in these two uh, ends here, I'm going to get a better response. Let's try that. Let's close this. Let's go to our layer viewer. Let's go to edit mount points. I can either right click at a mount point, which I need to fill in all this information, or I can right click on the, one of these mount points that I already have and copy a mount point. And then I can drag and drop it right there to make it simple, right? Let's put one right in the center and then let's copy this and then put one mount point right on top here. One, one thing we need to know, we need to know is that the mount points needs to be inside of our uh, outline. Copy mount point and then There you go. I know it's too close to components, too close to outline, but this is a uh, hypothetical case. So save, minimize this. Let's go back to our mechanical shock, edit properties, save and run. Right click, edit properties, save and run the uh, natural frequency. And let's see how the results have changed. And meanwhile, that this is running, to not forget about our uh, solder fatigue because I don't have a good memory. I want to save my results. So what I do, I will click on this uh, result menu to open up and I will right click and save results. And this will save uh, whatever analysis that we have done, it will save the results in there as well. So if I now go down here, double click on the saved results, it will open up the uh, the result window. And while we were waiting for that to open up, or actually it's, it's opening up already, so let's just uh, give it a second here. 
there you go. So the uh, the solder fatigue result that we have from that uh, previous uh, analysis, it's here. So I want to keep this on to compare my results when I update my uh, my board. Now, mechanical shock and natural frequency is done. Now you can see the natural frequency has increased from 190 to 630. So usually, the higher your natural frequency, the better response you get from your mechanical shock and vibration. And shock problem is gone, right? So that's that's one way of doing uh, addressing your, your problem. I know you probably cannot just add a mount point to your board wherever you want to, but you can see how quickly I added a mount point and then you can go to your project managers and uh, talk about things that you need to change to get a better, better result. Next, let's address the, uh, the uh, uh, solder fatigue and play the true hole problem. So right now I'm using a uh, very generic FR4. What happens if I change my FR4 to something that is more expensive? So let's just highlight, highlight all of my laminate, edit selected layer. So instead of a generic FR4, let's use something that is a little bit more expensive. 370HR, say, and you can see my CTE has changed from 17 point something to 14 point something. So I think I'm going to get a better response here. So let's see, right click, edit properties, save and run on solder fatigue. And let's run play this through whole fatigue as well. Edit properties, save and run. And it is done. Let's look at our result. You can see I already have much, much better uh, result here. If I compare this against my previous result, let me open up the uh, uh, result window. I already have much better response. I know it is failing faster, but I get rest, less red components here. So Let's bring this guy here. Let's put it here. Let's compare this against solder fatigue. You can see that in the on the right hand side, I had the previous uh, FR4 generic FR4 result, and this is a 370HR FR4. I have much better or more green or uh, more yellow rather than having more red. And now let's look at our plated through hole. You can see it's all good now, and the plated through hole previously was failing at about two years and now i don't have a, have a problem anymore 